And Lord, we just welcome you and your Holy Spirit into this place. We welcome your presence this morning. Father, awaken us to your goodness, your kindness, your love. Fill us, Lord. Fill us so that we might have something to give to others and to you, Lord. Fill us this morning with your spirit of truth and love. Thank you, Lord.
for your love, your kindness, your goodness, your beauty, your mercy, your grace. <laughs> Lord, you have given us all the gifts that we need this Christmas, like rest and joy, forgiveness, Lord, community. Just take a moment, just take a moment to be grateful this morning before your God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be reminded this morning of the two most important things in life. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light kindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might, be, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son of, from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. Far from the fu his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at his Father's side. He has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Hope you're catching a theme uh, in the songs and the readings. Uh, this, and actually, we've talked about it some in Advent, too. I mean, one of the great responses of God's people to all that God does should be to rejoice, to take joy in what He has done. Um, but, you know, we live in a, I, I don't know, um, I think it's just the nature of human beings and our fallenness to be distrustful. And so we hold out on our joy. We're, we're like, no, I can't really rejoice in that. It'll be taken from me or um, I won't be able to do it. So I'm just going to wait a little bit. And unfortunately, we miss out. Um, so what I want to do this morning is a little different than just go into a full-blown sermon. You hear enough of my uh, talks in that regard. But I, I want to do more of a reflection on our readings today. Uh, I think it's good when we read the Bible ourselves to sometimes pause and just reflect, to pick up on a word that runs throughout and like, I wonder why that word is appearing 18 different times in six verses, you know, must be important. Or to uh, notice how uh, things begin and end and some of the symmetry and things that are in there and the themes. And so um, if you look at your reading in Isaiah for just a moment, let's start there and uh, notice the, idea, the theme of rejoicing that runs throughout. It talks about the, this could either be Isaiah or it could be him speaking as the servant of the Lord, which has been introduced at this point, which we understand to be fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Rejoicing in the Lord, the soul exulting in God, uh, for this one speaking has been clothed with garments of salvation, covered with robes of righteousness. Uh, do you ever take delight in how you now appear before the Lord? who has redeemed you, who has clothed you in beautiful robes of righteousness, such as to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, it's been said by plenty of others, when the Lord looks upon us that are in Christ, He sees His Son. 
the language of the New Testament is that we are in Christ. You know? Now, you can't uh, see people quite this way, but if I put a penny in a cup, you can't see anything but the cup. If it's, a, you know, if it's a, not a clear cup, if it's a glass, you could see it, right? So, when we're in Christ, as some have said, it's a similar way. We're clothed in Him, in His righteousness. It's not our filthy rags, our stains of sin that the Lord sees anymore. It's, it's as if it's all made new. And here's the kicker on this one. Here's the symmetry. If you flip to the end of, of this reading in Isaiah, notice how it shifts. It mentions at the beginning, uh, bride, sorry, the bride sometimes, she gets mentioned, but the bridegroom really gets the focus in the, the ancient uh, Near East. So, at the beginning, it's like a bridegroom, and a bride, but a bridegroom uh, dressed up in all its, its festive garments. And at the end, the bride and bridegroom come back in again. But who's rejoicing at the end? God Himself. You know, it starts in this way. The bridegroom rejoices over the, the, the bride in the same way that God rejoices over you, His people. It's almost as if the rejoicing at the beginning comes because God has first rejoiced in us. We love Him because He's first loved us. We rejoice in Him because He's first rejoiced in us. How many of you find that impossible to believe sometimes, that God rejoices in you, over you? Mm -hmm. But what difference it would make if you could somehow hold on to that. I have a little grandson now. Uh, he's at the house right now. He was up fussing early this morning. Uh, they do that sort of thing. But you know, I, I don't know if you've um, noticed uh, how, how much babies or, or young children are, are on to the faces of, of their parents or those around them. They're just like locked in. And most of the time, of course, we're talking sweet to the children. Oh, hey, and, and we're smiling and making all these sweet. And the, and the children just lighting up. You know, their face, they're happy. They smile right back at you, sometimes from a very early age. You know, just even a few days, sometimes even a few hours old, they'll, they'll make that little smile at you. It's almost like if they know that they are being loved, they're secure. They're happy. If they see you rejoicing over them, they rejoice right back. But I don't know if you've ever tried this. It's kind of a mean trick. I don't recommend it. But have you ever made a, a kind of an unpleasant face? Have you noticed what they do? They look terrified, right? I'm afraid that's how most of us live when we think of God's view of us. Terrified. He just sees the junk. And of course, He's not pleased. And we're terrified. We think He's making that kind of uh, angry face at us, right? We need to hear Isaiah no, uh, we have been robed in robes of salvation, done up like a, a bridegroom for his bride, you know, waiting for, in festive garments. We're beautiful. We're radiant. It's not our own, right? In a sense, we're reflecting back what's already been given to us. And God rejoices over you who are his people. Yeah? And just as children find security in that, we need to find our security in that. Find our, our joy, our peace, our comfort. Amen? So hold on to that as you go through that, as, the, as you go back after the holidays into the world and it starts beating you up again, knocking you down again, and then you think God's the same way. Hold on to it, okay? He rejoices over you. And we rejoice in return because He has first so delighted in us. So read the, uh, Isaiah again at your leisure. And let's uh, look over to this amazing prologue to John's Gospel. You've heard it many, many times. Um, but, I mean, here's, I guess, the, the heart of this. Um, you know, love needs to be made manifest, I would say, in our fallenness. We sometimes jumble up the different states of, of humankind's history. And what I mean by that is we sometimes jumble up what it was like before we sinned, what it will be like, you know, in glory when there is sin no more, and the, and the way it is both before we know Christ and our fallenness and afterwards. We get them all mixed up sometimes. So, um, I, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I think we're distrustful people in our fallenness. I don't think it was that way in the beginning. We knew God loved us. We were secure in that. But when we turn from it, 
again, we're distrustful. We think he's going to get us. He's going to slam us. He's going to whatever. So imagine, you've heard the different uh, analogies and stories. You know, people that have, you know, they talk about birds. You've heard that one about the, the birds freezing in the snow. The husband would never go to church with his wife. You've heard this one. And he begged and begged. And it's Christmas Eve. And he stays home. And he looks out this window up from his little comfy reading chair there. And there's a little mother bird trying to help her babies back into the nest. They had fallen out. And they're going to freeze to death in the snow. And he goes out and tries to help them. But they're terrified of him and try to run away. And he's like, no, I want to help you. And he's like, doggone it, I have to become a bird for them to understand me, apparently, that I really do love them and want to help them. And then it kind of hit him. Boom. You know, this is what God has done for us. And um, he has taken on flesh to communicate that he really does love us. And we might believe him. So uh, we just need to hear John's gospel in some ways, this idea of the incarnation, I think, in that response, same that regard, same way as as Isaiah, he wants us to know he loves us, and somehow that has to be made tangible to us in our fallenness, or we are distrustful. Does that make sense? You know, um, somebody can pass you a note, you know, in grade school, and say, "I love you," and you don't know what to make of it, do you? And then when you get a little older, it's like they can say, "I love you," but you know, you, you will prove it to me, show it to me. Make it real, you know, put skin and bones on that. That's kind of weird. So quick, seven quick things here on, on this, uh, these familiar words, and then we'll call it a wrap. But things to reflect on again. We have uh, John thumping on a lot of themes here right at the beginning. And so try to piece it together. But if you don't get it all, maybe jot these seven things down and reflect on them more in the coming week. First thing that uh, John says before us is our Lord's eternity of being. In the beginning was the Word. Uh, so before there was a beginning, He was already there. The Word is the one that He's used, the language He's using to refer to Christ Jesus. In, in that time period, in the philosophical age of the Greeks and Romans, the Logos was used to refer to that which held everything together, that which made thought possible, that which made mind possible. You know, um, without going down too much of a rabbit trail, try to imagine thought without words. You know, we translate it word. Try to imagine being a human being without words. Read Helen Keller's uh, memoirs sometimes of how she described herself before she started understanding language thanks to her tutor. You know, she, she described herself as a ghost of a being, a no thing. She, she, she had no substance. She, didn't, she wasn't human hardly. She became a human being in her understanding when words came into being. So it's a, it's a remarkable wor word that John uses, this logos, this unifying principle thing that holds it all together, that gives definition and, and, uh, to all things. So this is a reference to Christ, to the Lord that he's using. In the beginning was the word. Before there was a beginning, he was already there. So he's refer referring to the eternity of the being of our Lord. Second thing is his distinct personality. I mean, we, can, we use God generically, but we're starting to learn as we read through scriptures that God is, is a, a community of persons. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There's a distinction, you see that? You can't be with someone unless you're different from that someone. So now we have at least two persons that we know of. And we would, of course, as Christians, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it's distinct personality. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His true deity. And I'm, I'm sorry we have to state the obvious, but um, it, it's funny how folks like Jehovah's Witnesses, nothing against anybody that might have family or friends that are in that, but they take the Greek text, and because there's no definite article, they assume that this means, in, and the Word was a God. Not at the same level as God the Father, you know, uh, and, and so they reduce the deity of Christ to some lesser form of deity. But actually the way the Greek words in terms of it, it's a building form, you know, like when you're moving to something greater, this is kind of the climax. In the beginning was the Word, that's, that's neat. And the Word was with God, that's, but the Word was God. Boom. So this is really a declaration of the Word's true deity. That's the third thing. The fourth... And this is, I think, important. And this is what, again, coming back to that idea of rejoicing. His unchanging relationship in nature. He was in the beginning with God. Who was in the beginning with God? 
the Word. And who is the Word? Jesus Christ. Okay, so we have these sayings that you see in Scripture too, that the church is, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This one who came as a mere babe, the one who humbled himself about as low as you can go, was the one who was in the beginning. The same one who brought all things into being. And that's what uh, John tells us next, the fifth thing is this word's full creative glory. Amen? If you didn't catch that uh, he was in the beginning and make those connections to creation, he goes on to say, you know, all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So we see the creative glory. You, you, you go out and you look at the starry expanse of the heavens. You look at the world around you and you want to give God the praise. Well, remember who was in the beginning with God, who was there and through whom God brought all things into being. It was His Word. And I, I don't have to trace this out too much for you. Just the idea of the Word again, the spoken thing and the power to create. You know, God in the beginning said, let there be light. Right? He spoke it into being. And now John tells us that that agency of God's creative glory was the Son, was the Word, the Word who has taken on flesh for our salvation. It's really remarkable. So he doesn't change. Same as at the beginning is the one who's come now. We're supposed to make the connection to a new creation. What he did then is what he's doing now. It's just as remarkable, just as incredible, just as exciting, just as glorious. And so we're back to the salvation again that he came to secure for you and me. This new creation, us robed in these righteousness and what God sees in us now and rejoices over. It doesn't change. You can't squeeze God's love out of him till he doesn't love anymore. You know? Christ, who was at the beginning, is still the same today. So his unchanging age, his full creative glory was the fifth one. The sixth, his life-giving power. In him was life, and his life was the light of men. Right? So what did God do after he made light at the beginning? And the expanse, and then separated the waters above from the waters to be brought from the dry land. After all those things, what did he start to do? After the sun, moon, stars came, birds and fish and all the life. Just a little bit of life? No, such that the seas were full and the heavens were full of the birth. Fullness of life. And then he gives us the joy of being part of the fullness of human life. He takes the first man and woman and says, be fruitful, multiply. But God is life. And he gives life in the full. Doesn't hold back. And so if you've ever felt like you're drying up on the vine, the word is the one in which you'll find your life again. His love for you, like a little child, you know, that finally hears those love, you know, the experiences the love of his parents and it just lights them up like Christmas trees, right? Let's light up when we live from here, hear that, that, that love of our Father out into the world. And then seventh, uh, the seventh point is his incarnation. If I've not been clear, let me just review them again. First one is our Lord's eternity of being. Second, his distinct personality. Third, his true deity. Fourth is unchanging relationship to the Father and the Holy Spirit, as we would learn later, and his unchanging nature. He's the same as he was at the beginning when he brought all things into being. Fifth is his full creative glory. Sixth, his life-giving power. And then seventh, his incarnation. Again, he took on flesh. Why? To do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Mankind had blown it. Mankind needed to fix it. So he took on our flesh. But that's also a way of saying he took on weakness. He took on lowliness. God Almighty humbled to the lowest place of a helpless babe. Right? So if you've ever felt weak, like you had no place in the world, the Son of God knows it. He's been there. He knows what it's like to know, experience all the mistreatments and injustices of this world. And, and so he is a friend of sinners. He's a friend of the, the wounded, the brokenhearted, those who, who feel like they have no strength left. Right. He stooped to the lowest so that he might, in due time, lift us to the heights of glory, to reign on high with him. Right. 
He became, uh, the, uh, the, the Son of God became the Son of Man so that He could take the sons and daughters of mankind and make them sons and daughters of God, right? Lift them up. He stooped to, to conquer, we might say. And I think uh, that's plenty to chew on. But the one uh, theme, as I mentioned at the very beginning, hold on to is rejoicing. Why rejoice? Because God rejoices over you. Why does He rejoice over you? Because when He looks on you who have come to Christ Jesus, He sees the glory of His Son, the beauty of His Son, uh, the, the joyful radiance of His Son. I actually will close with one more thing. You know, I, I, don't, I don't ever really feel fullness of joy very often. I don't know how often you do. I mean, we know what happiness is like. It comes and goes. And, but, but real joy that satisfies to the deep down core of your being, now, we usually just get little bits of it. I had the gumps last night. Now, it, it's not your fault, Caroline. I mean, but you were part of it. I mean, <laughs> just our kids only were there, you know, and my grandson. And all around the table, and I, I don't know, it's just one of those moments where you, you just, I was overcome. I had to go upstairs and get on my face and just tell God thanks. I mean, it was just a joy that's, and I knew I didn't do it. It was just, look what God has done. And I was... I, I just had a deep joy. But understand in a greater way, that's how the Father looks upon what Jesus Christ the Son has done. Look what my Son has done. Look at these people that He has given Himself for and brought to Himself, redeemed by His own blood. And God rejoices. And so all who find themselves in Christ, God sees his, the glory of His Son. So we have much to, to take uh, heart in, to rejoice in, because God rejoices over us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I ask your forgiveness for um, me being too much of a Scrooge, not just at Christmas. Uh, uh, you have given us every reason to rejoice. You have given the best. You have given your Son. You have given everything that we might be your people, that your love for us might find uh, its, its full answer in our love for you. And too often I'm, I'm, I'm more of a curmudgeon than uh, one who fully is full of joy. Forgive me. Forgive us when we, we let the world suck our joy out of us, beat it out of us, press it out of us. Uh, fill us afresh with your spirit. Remind us in the depths of our being that you love us. This is why Christ came, to make that love known that we might know you and we might rejoice as you have rejoiced over us. We bless you. We praise you for the salvation that is ours, for the victory that was won for us by our Lord Jesus. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand now and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made.
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Mark, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, for all in public service, Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Henry, our governor, and Keith, our mayor, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those we name to you now. Hmm. Emily, Riley, Eddie, Sharon, AJ, Carol, her family, dolls, boxes, newsrooms. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, resurrection especially Alicia Eddington, in thanksgiving, Lord, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's humbly confess our sins before Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in, in His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. With your spirit. Fist bump, elbow bump. <laughs> Catch an eye. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. 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 It's sometime you may be seated. <laughs> Um, just a couple of quick reminders. If you didn't see things in the newsletters, not that you were necessarily going to this come back, but our six o'clock service we are uh, we're going to resume next Sunday. So we're taking a break this evening because a lot of our folks uh, that help us with that service are out of town uh, and such. So that'll be picking up uh, next Sunday. Well, regular times going forward here: nine thirty next week, six o'clock in the evening, and we'll keep you posted as uh, new things uh, end up on the calendar. So we're keeping our eye on uh, vaccines and hopefully. Yeah, 
some sort of return to normalcy in 2021, but Merry Christmas, everyone. We can say that at least for 12 days, right? So let's make the most of it and, and carry some of that joy out. It's, it's kind of bad to be in a reflective state, but uh, so I'm going to do one more little brief one. You know, you see this insert in here on points. Some of you are probably like, oh, it's one of those inserts and you don't even bother to read it. But, you know, people put Thanksgiving for people that they love on here people that they've lost, uh, at least, you know, no longer in our sight here in this life, and they remember them. Um, but what I want to just remind you is, is, is God remembers too. Uh, and, and we can't keep people in life by our memory, but God can. That's why we can dare to believe that even though they may pass from this life to the next, they yet live. So uh, let the sheet even, as you look in some of these in, in memory of, give you cause to hope and rejoice. Amen. All right. So, uh, any announcements I'm not remembering? I think we're good. Okay. We'll walk in love <laughs> as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, His mother, was made truly man, yet without the stain of sin, that we might be cleansed from sin and given the right to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts of bread and wine. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. For by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us your peace. Now by faith, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. the bread of heaven.
Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky look down where he lay. A little Lord Jesus asleep. stand in thanksgiving uh, of the God who is so crazy about us that he couldn't stay away. He had to take on flesh and come and show it how much he loved us that we might be his people. So, and praise to him. Let us give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank, thank you, you for, for feeding us with the spiritual food, food of the most precious, precious body and blood of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Rich, how about giving us the blessing this morning? The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds, in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth out those doors <laughs> into the community, right? Breathing the breath of God on those around us this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Something like that. Thanks be to God. Thank you.